Have you ever been on a road trip and at just about halfway there, your vehicle decided to break down, leaving you stranded? Well, over the years, we've taken our kids on many, many road trips, and thankfully, we haven't had any major breakdown issues until now. And you guys, in today's video, I'm going to tell you all about it. If you're new here, I'm Jennifer, and welcome to The Family Fudge. A few weeks ago, back in March, I shared with you guys what I was calling part one of our spring break vacation. That's when we got completely flooded staying at the Disney World campground. And if you missed that video, I'll link it down below. But I called that part one of our spring break because this week was supposed to be part two. We had planned to take a big family road trip up to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, because I got an invitation to a social media media event at one of our favorite theme parks, Dollywood. So the plan was for the whole family to load up in our renovated RV and to make the drive from Florida where we live up to Tennessee. I was planning to stay at the Dollywood Dream More Resort, which I'd never seen before, and the social media event would have included a jam-packed schedule. During the week, I was scheduled to tour the resort. I was going to check out the flower and food festival and lots more. Now, while I was doing that, the rest of the family had reservations at the Jellystone Campground, which has lots of activities for kids to do. And they were also planning to spend some time at Dollywood as well. So like I said, that was the plan. And I've shared lots of different videos here on YouTube about road trip packing and organization and different tips and hacks. I love road trips. When getting ready for a road trip, I spend several days packing clothes for all the family. I like to keep everything organized using packing cubes. I also like to gather up some special road trip snacks for the kids. That way they don't get hangry and they can help themselves whenever they need a snack. And I'm not constantly having to hand things out. And then of course we have the road trip activities. I love finding new activities for the kids to help keep everyone happy and entertained. On this trip, you guys, I actually stocked up on lots of new fidget toys because my kids have really been loving these and I kind of do too. It's about an 11 hour drive from Orlando all the way up to Pigeon Forge. So we like to break the trip into two days. We left for this road trip on Sunday evening. We only had about a five hour drive, but of course, by the time we got to the Walmart, it was past midnight. Now I know that might sound weird. Why would we go to a Walmart after midnight when it's bedtime? And the reason is, is because we were there to Wally Dock. Now I know that sleeping in a Walmart parking lot might sound super sketchy, but it's actually quite common for RVers who just need a safe place to pull over for a few hours. It's called Wally Docking because you're staying in a Walmart parking lot. Now in this area of Georgia, in this town specifically, it is completely fine to stay overnight, but that's not allowed everywhere. So definitely check with your specific Walmart before you try to park your RV there overnight. On Monday morning, after just enough sleep, we got back on the road and we were headed to our favorite road trip pit stop, Bucky's, and it's located in Warner Robins, Georgia. Now I know I've mentioned Bucky's in videos before, but if you're unfamiliar, Bucky's is like the biggest, bestest gas station ever. Unfortunately, they're not in all states yet, but we love this place. And you guys, it's not just a gas station. These stores have lots and lots of cute beaver themed merch. Whenever we make a pit stop here, we always try to schedule a little bit of extra time just to look around at all of the neat items. Bucky's is also very known for all of their snacks. They have a lot of snacks. Some of our favorites include the cinnamon pecans. Those are really good. They smell really good too when they make them fresh. And personally, I am a huge fan of their cinnamon rolls. Now, of course, they do also have a couple of healthier choices as well. You can get a fruit cup or a veggie cup, but if you're looking for something sweeter, they also have lots of different types of fudge. 
which surprisingly I'm not a huge fan of. And of course, they're also really famous for their beaver nuggets. Now, all of these snacks are good and fine, but we really came for the breakfast tacos. The breakfast tacos here are super popular. There's usually a big line for these and they go super fast. Oh yes, and some of these breakfast tacos have kind of funny names. Personally, I really like the hippo taco that has eggs, beans, potatoes, salsa, and bacon. But if you're more of a sausage person, they also have a rhino taco. Other than the breakfast tacos, they also have breakfast burritos, and they also have a lot of breakfast sandwiches sandwiches that have biscuits or croissants. Now you guys, at this point in our trip, we were ready to get back on the road. We'd all gotten some rest, had a nice clean bathroom stop, we'd grabbed a yummy breakfast, but we still had about five more hours of driving left until we'd get to Pigeon Forge. And unfortunately, that's when the unexpected happened. We were just driving along and then suddenly we lost all power. Now thankfully, because there wasn't too much traffic, we were able to pull off to the side of the highway, but this was like a complete shock to me and my husband. The kids didn't know what was going on. All we knew is that we couldn't get the RV to start back up again. So we called our insurance and our roadside assistance but they were both hours away. And because we needed an RV towed and not just a regular car, lots of tow trucks in the area said they couldn't help us. Now, by this time, it was actually starting to get pretty hot inside the RV and it wasn't feeling particularly safe. So we decided to call an Uber. Now for me, getting all the kids out of the RV and into the Uber on the side of a busy highway was definitely nerve wracking. And of course, at this point, there was no way that we could bring everything with us from the RV. I had to quickly get together all of the clothes, the food and other necessities I thought we would need as we were leaving the RV and I could only bring what I could carry and what would fit in the Uber. This definitely wasn't the cheapest Uber ride, but at this point I was just grateful that the driver was willing to pick us up on the side of the highway. The kids and I ended up taking the Uber to a local hotel. Luckily they had a room available for us. But while we were going to the hotel, my husband had to stay with the RV and wait for the big tow truck that could handle towing an RV. We were able to find an auto place not too far from our hotel, and while they spent the rest of the day trying to figure out what their problem was, the kids and I hung around the hotel and tried to make the best of a not so happy situation. So at this point, it was just a waiting game. Now, honestly, we didn't bring a ton of food on this trip because we were hoping to stop at Costco. But before we left the RV, I was able to grab a few things that we could have for dinner. We had lentils and rice. We had an assortment of soups. We had some mac and cheese. I had one bag of carrots. And I also had a few bowls of my favorite instant ramen. That's what I had. Our room had a little fridge and a microwave, so we were able to heat everything up for dinner and it was pretty good. For breakfast the next morning, we also had a few choices that I brought with us from the RV. I grabbed a couple of different types of cereal, some shelf stable milk, we had one pack of breakfast shakes, and some applesauce. And to go along with this, the hotel also had a little breakfast with some fresh items as well. After breakfast, we were still waiting to find out whether they were gonna be able to fix the RV or not. And finally, they decided that they couldn't. Basically, the RV needed a new fuel pump, which they didn't have in stock. And after calling around to lots of different places, we had no luck. It was at this point that we finally made the decision to go ahead and rent a van. We decided our best option was to just go back home. So first we had to go back over where the RV was parked and we had to unload as much as we could. At this point, we didn't know when we were gonna get our RV back to Florida. So we wanted to make sure to bring out all of our valuables and things that we really needed to go back home with. When we had left the RV in such a hurry the day before, we kind of left a big mess. So I made sure to clean that up. And I also made sure to clean out any food that was still left in the fridge and the pantry. 
saying goodbye to Dollywood because we're not going to make it this time. Who knows? She might have been there. could have met her. I'll be so sad if that happens. After that, we went back to our hotel, packed up everything that we had there, then we loaded up in the rental van to head back home. After about an hour and a very scenic detour, it was way past lunchtime and we just so happened to be passing the same Bucky's that we stopped at the day before. Now before the kids picked out something for their lunch slash dinner, they each had $25 to pick out a souvenir since they didn't get to at Dollywood. Lily picked out a unicorn blanket for the car and a super cute plushy sheep. Kenzie picked out a Bucky's blanket and a stuffed bear. Jackson picked out a new Bucky's hat and a different blanket. And then finally Griffin picked out a stomp rocket and a race car. For Linner, Jack picked out a turkey melt. Griffin picked out a plain hot dog. Kenzie chose a chicken sandwich and Lily got a grilled cheese. After about six hours and a couple of potty stops later, we were finally back home. Just in case you're wondering how much it costs to tow an RV from the middle of Georgia to Orlando, it was about $3,000. So there you have it guys. It was definitely not the road trip I had planned for my family and not the video I planned to share with you guys. But overall, everybody's fine, everybody's safe, and we made it back home and I'm thankful for that.